I have fixed my mind on another time, on another time. And here I mean to stand until God gives me more light. And that is today, today, today until He comes. I have fixed my mind on another time, on another time. I have set my course on the narrow way, on the narrow way. For I know the time is close at hand for which I watch and pray. And that is today, today, today until He comes. I have set my course on the narrow on the narrow way. Even so, Lord, come quickly. This is my fervent prayer. For I've caught a glimpse of glory.
house. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen wake it, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As ours are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Let us worship the Lord. Amen. We invite you to stand as we sing this morning. And Troy, we come before his presence with thanksgiving. We enter into his courts with praise. Singing gladly, come before. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. We enter into his courts with praise. Enter into his courts with God, you are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. You are Omega. You are the beginning and the end. And I ask, Father God, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to be here in this day. And that everything done will be done to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We invite you to remain standing right where you are as we sing this morning's opening hymn. In a little while, we're going home. Hymn 626. Let us sing a song. Let us sing a song that will cheer us by the way. In a little while we're going home. For the light will end in the everlasting day. In a little while we're going home. In a little while. In a little, little while. while. In a little while. while. We shall cross the willows foam. We shall
may be seated. Y'all couldn't have me. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Bethany. All right, I know it's a little gloomy, but I know we could do better. So we've come to the part of the service where we get to say thank you. <laughs> thank you so much to each and every one of you for taking the time out to worship with us on this beautiful Sabbath morning. Well, it ain't quite beautiful, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but are there any visitors with us today? I see a few and you may be shy to stand, but that's okay. So, um, I'm Aisha. And my name is Miyoshi. And we would like to say welcome to our family. Not the Wallace family, although you are welcome there. But the Bethany family. The place where? Resurrection. The place where? Resurrection. Y'all sound so beautiful. To all, of our, to all of the visitors who frequent our home, we say welcome back. However, if this is your first time worshiping with us, please don't make it your last. We do hope that you enjoy our service, and we hope that you live better than you came. We now welcome the praise team to make you feel even more welcome and for you to warmly greet by our visitors. Our Happy visitors. Sabbath! Welcome to Bethany, where resurrection takes place. So happy to see all of you. I want you to get up and greet your neighbor this morning in church, where the resurrection takes place. Welcome to Bethany. Welcome to Bethany, where resurrection takes place. Where we meet, where we meet our friends and family. See the smile on every face. Let the Holy Spirit resurrect you as we look on Jesus' face. So pleasant in the morning again, church. Don't make me pull a Aisha on us again. So pleasant morning, church. And happy Sabbath then. I like that now. Somebody put me back here today. Lord help us. These are our announcements for this Sabbath. Uh, tomorrow, the church's board meeting has been rescheduled. Board members, please take note that the meeting is at 10 a.m. tomorrow, and that's on Zoom. 10 a.m. tomorrow morning on Zoom. <laughs> Thank you, S. Brother Keith. If I only got you, outside of the hymns. Uh, on Tuesday, a normal prayer, prayer meeting at 6 a.m. That's also on Zoom. Wednesday evening, prayer uh, pray service at 7 p.m. That is also on Zoom. Next Sabbath morning, our prayer service at 7 a.m., that continues on Zoom, but you get to come to church for children's early teen youth, adult, youth and adult Sabbath school classes, very much in the science area, and that begins at 9.30. So we see you all week on Zoom until we see you next Sabbath morning at 9.30. Good. Next Sabbath, 
uh, September 16th, our divine service. In our pulpit uh, will be Pastor Kenny DeVoe. We also have Thrives. So Thrive is our singles ministry. So we thrive in. So next week is the big Thrive Potluck Fellowship. Uh, please contact Dr. Sa Stephanie Hutchinson for more information. If you are not in that group, and if you are not, if you are not in the group, why are you ain't in the group? So if you're not in the group, get in the group so you can get the announcements, and then we don't have to give so much up here. I like that for us. All right, so check Sister Olivia, and she can get, or listen, between Sister Eloise and Sister Olivia, one of them could get you in this group if you were one of our, one of our thrivers. Also on September 16th, uh, we've got AYAS uh, at 6.30, and that's going to be in person here at the church. Also next week, so let me just give this announcement, but there's also a meeting immediately after church next weekend, uh, next Sabbath, uh, and that relates to our, the South Bahamas uh, Impact 2023. So this is scheduled for the month of October. Bethany's partnering with our sister churches, Gamber and Adelaide, and we will hold our evangelistic campaign between October 15 to 21, so it's a full week. Uh, we're requesting your prayers and your assistance. I got my call already, so as you get yours, we pray that you will accept the call and heed whatever God needs you to do. Yes? I love my church boy, which are weak amens. <laughs> uh, so a meeting relating to that will be held immediately after uh, church next Sabbath. As I said, all invited to attend. We continue to keep in prayer Sister Jan Carey, Sister Marsha Allen, Sister Deborah Liberal, and our young Sister Peyton Watkins for full healing and recovery. And in a second, I'm going to say this. We're also going to add Sister Kellyanne uh, Sands to that list. Sister Peyton is here. Look at, listen, look at Sister Peyton. Look at her recovery. Sister Peyton, stand fast because you're here. Look at our list, Sister Peyton. We're so happy that you're getting much better and you're on the mend. So all couples who will be traveling with the Family Life Cruise in November are asked to please meet with Sister Olga Forbes immediately after the service right up front. So if you're traveling on that cruise, Sister Olga, is it too late to want to travel? No, if, you want to, if you're traveling on that cruise or want to travel on that cruise, meet Sister Olga right up front here. So we will make sure that our vamp out is sufficiently uh, short. So you could at least hear what she's talking about. So we have some birthdays this week. Uh, my good cousin, brother Casey Scabella, celebrated on the 5th. Uh, Eustacia Jennings, celebrated on the 6th. Uh, she's about the world. So she wrapped in a, what is it, is it called a sari? So she's in India, I guess, with the president of the U.S. So she can't find a hotel room, so I understand. So we want to send her good greetings from all the way here, because she's on the other side. I think she's going to Nepal tomorrow. Y'all know Stacy like travel. She's the only person who could beat me. No, boy, a lot of y'all could beat me too. <laughs> sister Sasha also celebrated on the 6th with Sister Eustacia. And today, today, today we've got three birthdays in Bethany that I'm aware of. We've got Sister Emily. I know she's there because I saw her. Sister Lee. Lee, where are you? There she is. Our children's, our children's uh, leader. I'll tell you how old she turns. No boy, she can kill me. She's, she now shares the same number that I have. <laughs> uh, Brother Keith Ryan also celebrates today. So go look for him. Find him, find him on, send him a text or find him online because he's not here today. Make sure you let him know that we're very happy that he is celebrating. Also, Brother Corey Hamilton. I don't see... Corey. Is Corey here? So Corey also celebrates today. <clears throat> Corey is one of our deacons. So we also want to wish him happy birthday. So find him. Find him. Drop. Oh, y'all can't talk in the, in the group A. So find him on WhatsApp. Get him on Facebook. He's also on Instagram because I saw him this week. I saw I remember that it was his birthday. So please say happy birthday, Brother Corey. So praise to him. You don't have to come here, but you got to say. Let's sing happy birthday to our birthday celebrants this week. And if we had any more this week. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy, happy birthday to you. We love you. We love you. We do. We love you. We love you. We do.
I was fast, I sang, I led the team to sing happy birthday. Did, did we have anybody else celebrating this week? Ooh, thank you so much. Got myself out of that one. We also extend happy anniversary to, to all couples who are celebrating this week. So this is Family Togetherness Day. Do we have any couples who celebrated this week or today? Ooh, good. Just two more announcements before I take my seat. So last week we were told of the tea party that's being held on Sunday 24th. <laughs> Our women's ministries will be hosting a tea party on the 24th of September at 3 p.m. right here at the church. Uh, you can contact Sister Monique if you're looking for additional information. Sister Monique is well at the back. Y'all know, know who she is. But if you don't, she's well at the back. Uh, are these two thrivers here? Are you speaking English today? Or you doing that? They gave us some good English last week. And finally, our men's ministries corner. September is being observed internationally, actually. It's Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. And it's aiming to educate men about the importance of prostate health and generate support for those who have been impacted by the disease. Uh, in keeping with this observation, Bethany's Men's Ministries Department is requesting that the church wear blue colors as much as possible for the remainder of this month. So our, so our communications team is leading the way. They're in their blue. <laughs> hey, leave them. Our deaconesses are, are also in their beautiful blue. I see Sister Phillips in her blue, Sister Brown in her blue, Sister Aldina in her blue, Elder Howard has on his blue tie. Dr. Roper has on his blue. Olivia, let's give him Olivia's and Annie Loisa in their blue. So let's do an even better job next week. Sister Marion has on blue. Yes. Ian has on. Ah, look at I'm loving the blue. Kareem has on some blue. So I encourage us as far as possible for the rest of this month to put on something blue that recognizes and supports uh, prostate cancer. Elder Keith and Pastor Curse Jennifer are also wearing blue. Elder O'Kell. <laughs> Shanique is wearing blue. We thank you for all the blue. And I, even want, I want to see this church full of blue next week when we get back here. So that way I don't have to call anybody's name. I said a whole church is in blue. We thank you so much for paying attention to the announcements. Uh, please take heed. And you can also follow the rest of them in our bulletin, which is electronic. I'm back. So <laughs> I come on behalf of the women's ministry to give you a little more, more, a little bit more, wow, information about the tea party. So our emphasis in the women's ministry is focusing on getting to know our pastor's wife a little bit better. So we decided to throw this tea party to welcome her into the fold. And our emphasis are more on gems. So we know who gems are. We're focusing on younger women. Of course, we want our more mature women there as well, but because our pastor's wife is coming in and we want to welcome her, we want our young women to come in and enjoy themselves as well. So a little bit more information. We will be at, we will be at <laughs> Bethany. My brain moving faster than my mouth. We will be at Bethany at 3 p.m. September 24th. The tickets are on sale and you can contact either myself, Sister Wallace, Deborah Wallace, Sister Monique Calmer, or Sister Elois to get your tickets. So we look forward to having each and every one of you. We wanna dress up, we wanna wear our fascinators and our gloves, and we wanna have a good time. We have prizes and surprises for persons who come out and we look forward to seeing each and every one of you. Have a happy Sabbath.
Welcome to the family. We are glad that you have come to share your life with us as we grow in love. And may we always be to you what God would have us be. Our family always there to be strong and to lean on. May we learn to love each other more with each new day. May words of love be on our lips in everything we say. May our hearts and teach us how to pray that we might be a true family. Welcome to the family. We're glad that you have come to share your life with us as we grow in love and May we always be to you what God would have us be. Our family always there to be strong and to lean on. Welcome to the family. We are glad that you have come to share your life with us as we grow in love. And may we always be to you what God would have us be a family always there to be strong. To be strong and to lean on. To be strong and to lean Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. The only investment that lasts forever. While we might invest our finances into the stock market, real estate, or other assets to see growth, an investment into the kingdom is the only one that has eternal significance. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That was Matthew 6, verse 19 through 21. That scripture shows us that by giving to God, we store up eternal rewards. May the deacons please come forward. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you've given us as a church and as a family. 
Heavenly Father, we don't acknowledge all the things you normally give us on an everyday basis, and you only ask just for a 10% tithe. But Heavenly Father, we ask you for more gratefulness in our hearts towards you and towards all the things you do for us on a daily, whether it's health, strength, finances, or just being alive. Heavenly Father, go before this church today. Bless them this day. Bless their families. Help us to all love each other and love you supremely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bethany, please stand for the scripture reading. Our scripture reading is taken from Joshua 2, verses 17 to 21. We'll be reading alternately from the King James Version in your hearing. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this time of thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, Thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thou, thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And, and she said, according, according unto your words, words so be it. it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she found the scarlet line in the window. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. I would be gracious if you would stand as we lead a lead into our intercessory prayer this morning. We sing thank you to the Lord in prayer. What a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear.
eternity, Heavenly Father. Lord God, Jehovah, you are faithful. We want to say thank you, Lord, this morning just for waking us up with a sound mind. We thank you, Father, Lord God, for all that you have brought us through this week. But this is the day the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it because we serve a mighty God. We serve a faithful God. We serve an on-time God. We serve a God that will never fail. Hallelujah. If there is no water in the desert, he will provide it for us. And we thank you. He's a God will never fail. He is faithful to his word. He is faithful to us in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, Lord God, as we bring the man of God before you, to bring forth the word of God, I ask you and we ask you, merciful Father, to move upon him in a mighty way. Let your word go forth with power and authority. Lord God, touching the hearts of man that they will yield to your word this morning. Even us, Father, Lord God, we repent, Father, Lord God, for what we have done this past week. But Father, Lord, your hands is stretch out still, beckon us to come in, Lord, before the throne of grace boldly, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of our need. Blessed Father God, touch the ones that are sick this morning, the ones that is calling upon your name. Father, Lord God, heal their bodies. God, the ones that is calling on you for the, the void that lies in their heart, fill it with peace because you are the Prince of Peace. Someone, Father God, will have to go before the church Monday morning. They are calling on you, but God, you are the great counselor in the name of Jesus. You are the great lawyer in the name of Jesus. Everything that we need, oh God, is tied up in you. Strengthen our faith this morning that no matter how the sea may roll, no matter how the waves may go over our head or the breeze may blow, Father, the storm will come our way. Help us to stand in the mighty name of Jesus. Strengthen our faith. Give us strength. Bring our nation before you. Yes. Our men is dying in the streets, God. Let them put down their guns and pick up the word of the living God. That they'd be able to fight in the name of Jesus. Father God, help the homes that is broken. God, bring them together. When we have strong homes, we have strong foundation in our nation. Oh God, we thank you. We calling on your name to help us in these times. Lord, we need you. Now, Father God, as we rest of the service in your hand, rest upon the praise team as they worship God. And every soul that is in this place, that God, that they will worship the mighty God because he is faithful. And everything that we need is tied up in him. And he's inviting us to come. Come unto me, all ye that heavy laden. He's saying, I will give you rest. We need rest, but yet we need Jesus more. We thank you now. In the mighty and the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I invite you, church, just to stay right there. This first song says, this is your house. You know this, Bethany. Come and dwell. This is a holy house of prayer. We ask the Father to come and dwell. Singing, This is Your House. This is your
Amen. Amen. We just got a couple of songs this morning, church. You going to sing with us? Why are we going through this again? Are you going to sing with us? This is the corporate singing. The songs just say that we lift our hands and give him glory. We lift our hands to give him all the praise. Because he is worthy. Worthy of all our praise. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody sing with me. We come to lift our hands and give To lift our hands and give Him praise. We come to lift. We come to lift our hands and give Him glory. We come to lift our hands and give Him praise. The highest give Him glory. We come to lift our hands and give Him glory. We come to lift our hands and give Him praise. Give Him the highest give Him glory. We've come to clap our hands and send up to the We come to clap our hands and give him the praise. Everybody sing with me. We've come to clap our hands and send up to the We've come, we've come. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. We've come to clap our hands. We've come to clap our hands and send up to the We've come to clap. We've come to clap our hands and give him praise. Give it the highest, give him more. To do our dance and magnify it. We come to do our dance and give it praise. Give it the highest, give it glory. Give it glory. We come to do our dance and give it praise. Give it glory. Give it glory. We come to dance. We come to lift our hands. We come to clap our hands. We come to dance. That was some clapping. Very little dancing. But I'm just interested in the praise. Listen, church. All kind of turbulence is coming our way. But this song says that we should hold on to God's unchanging hand. Forget what happens down here. Let's build our hopes on things that are eternal. Because they ain't never passing away. So this is the old hymn of the church. I want you to sing with us. And if you don't know it, you'll learn it by the time we're done. Time is filled with swift transition. Time is filled with swift transition.
is fleeting those hands will never let you go as we get ready to welcome Pastor Kerr just want us to focus and remember what this is all about nothing matters and nothing will do Jesus is not the center of it all. The song just asks and invites him to be the center of our life, of our homes, of our church. It's all about him.
Jesus, yeah. the center of our life, it's all about him. Nothing else matters. And thank you for putting Jesus in the center. The center of his church, the center of our lives, the center of our worship experience today. Thank you, praise team leading out so beautifully in worship and thank you for the richness of the worship experience that we are sharing here today it's just good Jennifer and I feel very happy when we are at Bethany <laughs> and we celebrate moments like these when we can come together and especially on a day like this when we celebrate families. Wasn't it wonderful? Wasn't it wonderful to to see those little ropers? Yeah. Huh? Put your hands together again, eh? Yeah, wow. I think I know where they got their singing from. It's grandma. Sorry, Doc. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But yeah, uh, I know their grandma. It's always inspired me with her rich musical talent, her singing. And so, yeah, that's good. Um, I'd love to hear them again. I'd love to hear them again. I'd love to listen. I'd love to watch this program again, just to hear those two little ones sing. And thank you so much. And, and thank you, Sister, Sister Billie Jean. Where is she? She went out? Yeah, but she said, such a, what a powerful prayer. Um, I'll, I'll just, yes, please. Yeah, powerful prayer. Um, and she said all the right things in her prayer. She has such a powerful preaching voice. Um, I'm, I, when she was praying, I said, I hope I get a chance to hear Sister Billie Jean pre preach one of these days because, oh, man, it sounds like she would bring down the house. Uh, I, I felt like she could have made an altar call. And, and, and all of us would go to the altar. So um, you can know when the Spirit is leading his people. You can know those who are connected with Christ and, and connected with God. And you can know those who really take their responsibility seriously in putting Jesus at the center. And, and this is so good. And um, where is Miriam? There is somebody in this church that I call, not you, Miriam, Miriam, Mar Maria, not Maria, Miriam. There is somebody with a tambourine. Um, man, where is she doing far from me? Uh, uh, I mean, 
I, every time I hear that, I remember Miriam in the Bible, uh, who, uh, while everybody was talking the praises of what God has done, Miriam just grabbed her tambourine and started to beat some tunes and knock some dance in the place, and everybody joined Miriam in dancing at the, the Red Sea. So, yeah, that is worshiping with a spirit. And when we have people of spirit in the church, that worship is en enriched. And so we, we're thankful, uh, thankful for all of that. And I think you had a, another Peter up here earlier. Um, I think, yeah, Peter and his wife came up here earlier. My wife ain't going to come up here with me. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm happy for all of you. I'm not, I'm not troubling my Jennifer, OK? Um, Thank you for allowing me the privilege to uh, speak to you today. <laughs> I hope you all had a good week, and I hope you've been blessed, and I hope you're staying focused and staying grounded. Uh, this is all I can say to you, Bethany, stay focused and remain grounded. Okay? This is a special week for the church on a global scale. Actually, the Seventh-day Adventist Church globally is celebrating um, Mental Health Week. It is, actually, it is, it is, it is family, family togetherness week. And they're going through a whole week of family togetherness week of prayer. And so there are special resources that have been supplied for this week. And um, I know that some folks have been emphasizing it because the special emphasis for this year's Family Togetherness Week is actually keys to mental, keys to healthy minds. Keys to healthy minds. So the Family Ministries Director from the General Conference sent a special message for all of you. I'll take a moment to read his message as we focus on Family Togetherness Week. And he begins with a quotation from Philippians 4.9. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. He said that the COVID-19 pandemic was a traumatic experience for the entire world. Many individuals, couples, and families had already been experiencing a level of distress while trying to hold it together physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Within this context, the Apostle Paul emphatically urges, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say, rejoice. Paul is writing from a prison cell and clearly understands that in every life, in, 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 in the life of everyone, trying times will interrupt the normal flow of things. Yet he knew there was no situation beyond God's help. In a world filled with overwhelming anxiety, depression, and emotional unrest, Paul offers the believers an answer, the peace of God. Same offer of peace is available to us today. This is, this is no ordinary peace, Paul says, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There's a place for scientific and psychological interventions, he says. However, God's peace goes beyond human intervention. It is the kind of peace that sustains during days of hardship. If we practice a healthy, thoughtful life, whatever things are true, 
whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, meditate on these things. And the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 8. He will walk with you, talk with you, and comfort you during challenging times. Your circumstances may, may not change, although he is able, but families, God will help transform your approach to trials. Yes. Amen? Yes. And it's, he says, one thing we know for sure, the, f the founders of modern psychology did not invent this kind of peace. This is not positive psychology or new age thinking. This intervention is straight from the word of God. This kind of peace resides in those who believe in what Paul shares in Philippians 4, 4 to 9. For when we pray and practice the mental disciplines of rejoicing, praying, meditating, gratitude, and thinking right thoughts, we can stave off anxiety, depression, and other emotional anguish, which can help us foster good mental health. Managing good mental health is vital for everyone. When fostered within a family, it can bring uh, significant benefits, better communication, understanding, empathy, less conflict, higher self-esteem, and resilience among family members. Good mental health goes together with good physical health. So listen, when families prioritize good mental health, they tend to also prioritize good habits. Good habits like adequate sleep, regular exercise, and a healthy diet. Parents or guardians in the home, you who care for their mental health are also good examples for their children. Learning to think positively. That was the message from Elder Dr. Willie and Elaine Oliver, directors of Adventist Family Ministries at church headquarters. You may find resources for this week's um, celebration. You may find it at family.adventist.org, family.adventist.org. And as I thought of the focus uh, of the family this week, and um, what the General Conference is helping us to grasp, I think, again, of a passage, that same passage in Philippians 4, verse 8, which I choose to call Paul's value statements. I'm going to say a little bit on this and then dovetail it into an example of great faith and home missionary work in the Old Testament. Let us pray. Oh God, we come again to worship you. I pray, Lord, that you will just use this, this small lump of clay to proclaim your word to your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul's value statements are very clear. It is right here again in Philippians. I have memorized it because it is critical to maintaining good mental health. <laughs> you have to focus on the positives. And here is Paul begging us, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, are, are what? True. Say true. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Everybody say honest. honest. 
honest. I'm very intentional in going slowly with Paul's value statements. Truth, honesty. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. Everybody say just. just. <laughs> Amen. Whatsoever things are pure. Everybody say pure. 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 Amen. Pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Everybody say lovely. lovely. Amen. You must say lovely like you're all lovely. Say lovely. lovely. Oh, okay. Yes, of course. Enjoy the word with me. Whatsoever things are of good report. Oh, God, everybody say, please say, say good report. Good report. <laughs> say it again. I need to hear that. Good report. Oh, praise God. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So our work is cut out for us. We know what ought to be in our thinking cap. What's to be in our thinking cap? Our thinking cap must have all of these on it. <laughs> Truth, honesty, purity, justice, loveliness. All these things are good report, things that are make good reporting, good, good stories. Think on these. You know, Colossians, uh, well, the, the, psalmist, the psalmist says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. life. Paul's value statements are very clear. The devil has declared war on the mind. Thanks to the church, for pointing us to this important week for the family when the focus is on healthy minds. Why has the devil declared war on the mind? I say it is for three main purposes. Three main reasons. Number one, the devil wants to overwhelm you with stress and anxiety. <laughs> Anybody here feeling tired sometimes and feeling too busy? Uh, Got to put uh, too many things on the, on, 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 on the burner at the same time. So much to be done. Uh, you, you sometimes you feel too, even too busy to pray. Uh, busy to study the word of God. Um, busy to pay attention to your child calling. Busy to pay attention to your spouse. Too busy for one another. Uh, I don't know about you, but I know we're in a real world. And, and the devil piles on the stressful situations on us. Too busy for God, too busy for one another. So one of the strategies of the enemy is to keep you busy. Too busy. He wants to overwhelm you with stress and anxiety. And secondly, he wants to take you on a downward spiral into immorality, immoral thinking. That's why Paul gives us this verse. Don't go down there. Think. Think about what you're thinking. Think about your thoughts. And thirdly, the devil wants to divide and conquer the people of God. And that is what he does. He wants to divide and conquer the people of God. We must be watchful and alert. His plan is to kill and destroy. <laughs> I, I grew up with... Uh, a number of boys around the community, and sometimes we would make some little things, you know, practicing our creative skills a little bit. 
and other boys in the community would come on it and if it looked too good, they kick it over and mash it up. You know, destroy it. A little what the devil has done. You, you, you look too good for God. Your church looks too good for the Lord. When things are going good and God is celebrating, the devil gets upset and kick it over. He will destroy it because he fears it's too good for God. And the, the family is, it must be careful because when your family is on track, the devil hates that. When the husband and the wife are happy, oh, he hates that. He will do what it takes to mash it up. When the children are walking in step with with parents and, 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 and with one another, there's harmony, there's love at home, there's happiness in the heart. That's not something the devil likes. And he will come and destroy it if you let him. If you let him. But thank God there is hope for all God's people. His plan is to kill, but Jesus came to give life and to give it more abundantly. He came to save his people from their sin. Jesus came to save families. He came to teach us how to get along. As a matter of fact, he came and taught us to call God Father. And tells us that your father and my father is the same father. My father is your father too. Call my father your father because we are one. We've been adopted in a family and, 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 and so when you come to Jesus, you are a happy family. Philippians 4, I mean Proverbs 4, we just read it. Keep your heart. Uh, Mark Finley made a powerful statement one time. He says that thoughts that are repeated become thoughts that are ingrained. I you think your teacher keeps telling you to repeat certain things when she wants you to learn. Repeat so many times. Repeat so many times. You keep repeating, repeating, repeating because thoughts that are frequently repeated are thoughts that are finally ingrained. Thank you, Mark Finley. Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things above and not on things of earth. For <laughs> you died, and your life is hidden with Christ. You are no longer your own. You bought with a price. You don't belong to here anymore. You're just a stranger and a pilgrim down here. You're heading home. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Then he says, trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. You want to be strong for your trials? Find it in Jesus Christ. You want strength for tomorrow's trials? Go to Jesus. Let him be the center of your life. In order for us to be kept in perfect peace, our minds must of necessity be fixed on Christ. There is no other way. Some of us will need to change some of the things that we think about every day, things that uh, give a lot of attention to, like worries and anxieties, and that allow us to just stress out. And that's what Jesus knew about it. That's why Jesus says, if you, if you want to know how precious you are, how much I care about you just check those birds out there look at them again they got up this morning with not a worry on their mind I as early as I could wake I heard I heard one of them there making all kind of music I see them jumping around picking up the little lizards looking for worms and they, they, if they, they're just doing it fine and they find nothing they're still singing along because they know a better day will come it's just a rough day, but I'll get it better tomorrow. The birds are still celebrating. They find reason to rejoice. Look at the flowers, they bloom. And you did nothing about that. God did that. God made the flowers bloom. God sent the rain, you had nothing to do with it. God sent the sun, you had nothing to do with it. So, so, so why worry, he says. 
Turn it over to Jesus. Yeah, turn it over to Jesus. Well, my friends, Ellen G. White says that it is impossible for the youth to possess a healthy tone of mind and correct religious principles unless they enjoy the perusal of the word of God. If we are to have right principles and follow Paul's value statements, if we are to inculcate them, we are going to have to feed upon the word of God. The word of God, when it takes place and takes root in our hearts, will change and transform our lives. Ellen G. White in Steps to Christ, chapter 7, she says, the test of discipleship, this is the chapter, the test of discipleship, she asks the question, who has the heart? With whom are our thoughts? Of whom do we love to converse? Who has our warmest affection and our best energy? If we are Christ, our thoughts are with him and our sweetest thoughts are of him. <laughs> All we have and are is consecrated to him. And we, we, we long to bear his image, to breathe his spirit, to do his will, and to please him in all things. Jesus has to be the center of our lives. And this takes me to the story that we have here that we want to go to in the Old Testament uh, the amazing transformation of a young, beautiful Rahab, the harlot. And, and our full house family church. Full house family church. A harlot converts her house into a family church. Hers is a story of faith and great courage. So much so that when the Apostle Paul is listing the, the heroes and heroines of the Old Testament of all Bible times, her name comes up. She's such an important figure that when Matthew is naming the descendants of Jesus, her name comes up. And the only thing I don't like about this, about, about what they do to her, is that they keep calling her the harlot. Everywhere in the Bible, I see this lady's name. They say she was a harlot. Rahab, the harlot. Even in the descendants of Jesus there, Rahab, the harlot. And here in Paul, Paul's writings in, 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 in Hebrews 11, 31, by faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who didn't believe when she received the spies with peace. The harlot Rahab. And it just goes to show that no matter how much we change, how much the transformation is, no matter how different we are now, there are certain scars we carry with us for life. God might have cleansed her. She is a new creation. She got married to a nice man named Simon, and she had a son named Boaz, and Boaz had a son named Jesse, and Jesse had a son named David. This is the same harlot Rahab who got converted, her heart has changed, and now her title still sticks to her. She has to wear the scars of her past for as long as she lived, and even when she's dead and gone, still keep those scars. She can't shed them but it goes to show something else, that God's amazing grace reached a harlot named Rahab. God's amazing grace brought the Messiah out of the lineage of a, a harlot. God's 
amazing grace place her name on God's honor roll. She's waiting to enter into the promised land. We remember the story very well, of course. Israel is about to enter the promised land. They're about to cross over Jordan, and when they cross over Jordan, the first city, the first obstacle they will face after crossing Jordan will be the well-fortified city of Jericho. The story is right here in, in Joshua chapter 2, and of course, in chapter 6, but Joshua sends two spies to check out to see what it's going to be like when they get over, and how easy it will be to take this city. These two men, two powerful soldiers, walked across and, of course, they found lodgment at the house of this harlot. This wasn't strange. I thought it was a smart strategy on their part because, you know, it was easy for them to enter a house and uh, avoid being detected or creating any kind of suspicion because the men were always going to that house. Strange men because our house was on the city wall or in the city wall. It was so she could receive her clients from outside the city and inside the city. So it wasn't a strange thing for these guys to come knocking on our doors. They, they thought this was a smart thing to do, but even though they were spies, they didn't know they were being spied upon. So the spies being spied upon were caught. They were detected. And the king, somebody says, we see some guys going into the house. And we know that those they look like the regular kind of customer. They must be some, hey, they're going for that. They're going for something else. They're here for that. So we need to find out what they're here for. And, and the king sent and said, those guys who come into your, came to your house, Hand them over. And she, she came up with a wonderful, smart idea, thinking quickly on her feet. And she says, hey, those guys came and did what they did, gave me my money, and they're gone. They, they, they lived too long ago. If you go after them, you should touch upon them and overtake them. Go quickly, go quickly, you will catch them. All this time, she had those guys hidden upstairs on her roof among the stacks or flocks that she had out on the flat roof and told them to keep quiet, leave this to her. She knows how to hide stuff. She told these guys, you don't worry, I know how to hide stuff. And I guess you men, we guys know, right? We guys know that when the sisters hide something, you don't try to find it. We, you might try to find it. And um, somebody said, Amen. She was good in hiding things and she hid the men, but as soon as the guys were gone, she came out and she struck a deal. A, she was a great negotiator. So she says in verses 12 and 13 of chapter 2, she comes up with a plan. And she's saying to them, now, guys, look. And before she said that, she said, I know that God has given you the city. I know that God has given you the land. We heard what God has done for you. We heard how he, you crossed the Red Sea. We heard how you brought down the Amorites and Ark. And we know how you crossed the Jordan. And when we heard what God's been doing for you, our hearts melted within us. So I know, I know God is with you. I know your God is the true God. Rahab, you know all of that? Well, she says, now look, when you come, when you come, verse 12, Swear to me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness to my father's house. Give me a true token. Watch that word, true token. 
that he will save alive who? Verse 13, my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver us our lives from death. She is thinking of her family. Amen. She is gone from home, beautiful single girl, left her mama and her papa and her brothers and her sisters and go find a little place on the city wall to conduct her business. But now, judgment day is coming. And the warning has been given and the messengers of God have come to her house. She receives the message and she knows that what these two men proclaim is word of God. It is the true God who has sent them and her heart shakes. And so the man, the man promised her, yeah, we will do that. So this is a great bargain. But a true sign is what she asked for. True sign. We got to come back to it in order to understand exactly what Sister Rahab is talking about. She had, she had no husband and she had no children. Up to this point, she had no husband and she had no children. A singles ministry lady. We call her a thriver, right? Yeah, she was a thriver. Yeah. But, but she pleaded for the salvation of her family. Because she was the family that she cared for so much. She, she loved her sister. She loved her brothers. She, she loved her dad and mom dearly. And, 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 and there are some folks who write people off, but there are people who have great values. And we don't know why some people do what they do, but that's not your business. Cover the people business and leave them with your God. Because when they are crying down on their knees and begging for deliverance, you don't see that. In their quiet hours, you don't hear that. When their hearts ache, you don't know that. We are not the judges of people. We leave judgment to God. And so she calls this, she, she values her family, and that's what we call family ministry at work. Family ministries at work, caring for those in the family. Making sure that the house is open and that judgment does not overtake our loved ones. It is seeking to save the family. That's family ministry. It is missionary work. It is restoring the family altar, a place of worship in your house. It is bringing the family members in from the cold. Bring them in from the field of sin. Bring the wandering ones to Jesus. That's family ministry. It is agonizing with God for the salvation of our family members. That's family ministries. Pray and beg your neighbors to pray. This is all that we have asked for. She said, I know that God will destroy this place. I know that this beautiful city will go. But she turned her back on her country, her back on her king, her back on her profession, her career, and she turned her heart to God. She chose to follow the people of God because her heart is convinced. Her heart is pricked deep down in her soul. She's convinced. These are the people of God. And so after they sealed the deal, she says, now I will let you down through this window. And she let the men down through the window of her upstairs house. You didn't hear me. You, no, 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 no. You didn't hear me what I said about this thriver. This thriver was one strong woman, boy. She was one strong harlot. This lady, you know what it takes for a woman to tie a man, string around a man, and let him down two stories up onto the ground? We're talking about soldiers. Where about a king? You're not hearing. But a king not have any soldier that look like me. Okay? Soldiers don't usually look like me. They look, 
They look like you need a. <laughs> they, 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 they are the kind of men, right? These are powerful Marines. These guys, powerful Marines. This lady ties them with string and hold it together nicely so they didn't break no limb. She let them down smoothly. One first, then you come next. You next. And I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure the must have said to her, you sure you can, you can do this? And she said, trust me, you'll see, I just let down one another. And so, and here it is. Both of them escaped. One strong harlot. They could never forget her. So they told her, you want a true sign? This is a true sign. The true sign is going to be a scarlet cord. I checked the Seventh-day Adventist Bible commentary for what she meant by saying, give me a true sign. And it says that she wanted a sign that Israel would recognize and respect. A true sign means a sign that the nation will recognize and will respect. Oh Lord. And look what that was that they gave her. They said, tie the scarlet, scarlet cord on top of the window through which you let us down. Because when the, when the army comes for this city, that's all we will look for. That's the only thing we will recognize and respect. The only thing we will recognize and respect is the scarlet cord. The only thing we will recognize and respect is the scarlet cord. This is the true sign of which side you are on. This is the true sign of whom you serve. Who is your God? Who do you follow? What side are you on? On the Lord's side or the enemy side? I will know it when I see the scarlet cord. Oh, this shall be the sign, the true sign. Israelites will recognize, oh Lord, have mercy. The only true sign was the scarlet cord at the top of the window to which Rahab lowered these men. She made just two specific requests and now they are honored. She, she says, give me a sign that you will spare my life and when you come, please save my family. And they said to her, okay, that's a sign. Now you go. You want me to save your family? You got something to do. Family, you praying to Jesus, save my children, save my husband, save my wife, save my family. God says we will save your family, but you got to do something. There is something you must do. These men said, go find them and bring them in. That's the only way they're going to be saved. Bring them in. The family members, if they are to be saved on the day of destruction, must be brought in. And she went on a missionary program. She went to do a Bible study, and everybody believed her. She had 100% success. She did better than Lot, you remember? Lot didn't do well, right? They laughed at Lot. Lot's city was gonna be destroyed also. And when Lot went to tell them, the angels said, come out and come in my house, they laughed him to scorn. This lady went out and she did what the men told her and everybody was found safe in her house. Mama came, daddy came, Brothers came, sisters came, and I noticed that brothers are in plural and sisters in plural. She must have been from a big family. So she must have had more than eight in her ark. I'm sure she had more than 
the four that left Lot's house with one dying along the way, she had wonderful success. Rahab, what was it that made her family believe her story? What was it that made her family believe her story? Remember, they didn't see the, the, the spies. And remember, Rahab could not tell them everything. You know that, right? Because the man said, if you open your mouth, you're dead. If you let out the secret, you're dead. So, my life for yours. If this secret comes out, know that you're gone. We will not respect, we will not respect or recognize the pledge we made. So she went to her family, and I, sus I, I suspect she told them just enough for them to be saved. Oh, Lord, have mercy. This Bible study was not about the sanctuary. It was not about health, meat, vegetarianism. It was not about the state of the dead. She made a simple Bible study. God of heaven is the true God. He has wrought wonders, taking his people from Egypt to the promised land. This God has a powerful people coming for this city. We must be ready. We must be ready. I got a secret. I know what it takes to be ready. Come to my house, come to the church, come to the house. I will have a church in my house. Come join the church in my house. Let there be a full house waiting for the day of judgment. And the people, her family members, they believe her, why? They saw the change. They saw the change in their daughter. Sister saw the change in their sister. Brother saw the change in this sister. They've been longing for her to come home. And now she came home looking like a real good Christian. She came home looking changed, transformed, happy, glad, free. The burdens of guilt are gone. The shackles are loosed. She's free at last. Praise God. Free at last. And they saw the sense of freedom and happiness and joy and light and peace flooding her soul. They realized that she's a new creation, a brand new girl. All things are passed away. She's born again, more than a conqueror. That's who she is, a new creation, a brand new girl. That was Rahab. Yes, Rahab's genuine conversion and complete transformation made her into a very successful home missionary and a great evangelist. As soon as the house was full and everybody came in, just like the ark, oh God, just like the day of Noah, when her family came to her house and they were singing some religious songs and church was in progress. They heard the sound of the people marching around the city wall. They heard that trumpet sound and she knew what it meant. The army has surrounded our city and they are blowing the trumpet. The ark of God is leading the priest the priests are carrying the ark, bearing the ark, a symbol of the presence of Almighty God in the midst of his people. As they marched, she heard the sound of trumpets. Oh, my brothers and sisters, the days when the trumpets will sound are not long from now. Oh, we are going to be in the church and hear the trumpet sound, and we will know what that means. 
Oh, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The trumpet will sound again one day. I hope Adventists know that. I hope we know that. And I hope we are doing what Harlot, Rahab the Harlot did. Go call everybody and bring them to church. Get them to church, the place of safety. Get them in the ark. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in from the fold of sin. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring the wanderers to Jesus. Bring them in. We thank God for his mercy. He gave us the scarlet cord. The scarlet cord of hope. Hope in Jesus. That's what it is. The center of it all is Jesus. Hanging on the cross of Calvary. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ bore the floral wreath of God's love for a perishing world. By his death, he provided the scarlet cord. Today, we are connected to Christ by the cross. He went to the cross. Jesus went to the cross. Oh, with what anguish and loss. Jesus went to the cross, but he carried my sins with him there. Today, our scarlet cord of hope is the precious blood of the Lamb. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing blood? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? My friends, this is the question. Do you have that scarlet cord on the doorpost of your heart? Do you have it? Are you washed in the blood? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Every family here today needs to ensure that everyone in the family is covered by the blood. Go home and build your altar. Build your altar and keep connecting with Jesus. Every day, ask Jesus by his blood to cover the family. Cover your husband, cover your wife, cover your father. Cover your mother, cover your children, cover your sisters and your brothers, cover your friends, cover your neighbor, cover your pastor, cover your church members, cover these praise team people, cover the youth of the church. For God's sake, ask Jesus to apply the blood to cover everybody. We need the covering because when Jesus comes, he is looking for a sign that he will recognize and respect and nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing. There is no other thing that will do. The only thing that will work. The only sign that God will recognize and respect is when he sees the blood. When I see the blood. I will pass over you. When Jesus steps out, comes to call his children, when the dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air, oh, when he shall say to the angels that excel in strength, go, gather my saints together unto me, all who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, Oh, when they hear that message and the instruction of Jesus, the angels of God will take off looking for the true sign. The sign that they can recognize and respect. And that will be the precious blood of the Lamb. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I feel impressed to pray for families today. I want us covered, my friends. God wants us to be covered. 
I don't know about you, but I want to be covered. And I want the sign that God and the angels will be able to recognize when Jesus comes. And so if you would like to be covered, will you stand with me? You're making up your mind to do what it takes to cooperate with God for your own covering, for the covering of your family. I thank you for standing to your feet. Is there a family member in the room today? Is there one family member who is not yet baptized and settled in the church? But somehow, you want to get in the house and be ready for the coming of the Lord. And you would like to say, Pastor, today, I surrender my life to God. I want to become a member of God's family and be ready for Jesus to come. If there's one like that, I would see your hand if you raise it. Is there one who will raise your hand? You're surrendering to Jesus today, surrendering to Christ today to become a child of God, to get baptized, to join the church. Yes, get baptized. Get baptized. Get baptized. Wash your sins away. Let the blood let the blood touch your heart. Go to the fountain. Go to the blood. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing blood? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? If there is one who wants to come to Jesus for the cleansing blood and be washed and made holy, this is your day to indicate so that we can visit you, study with you, pray with you, and pray for you. If there's one in the house today who is like that, if you raise your hand, I think I'll see it. Just raise it way up. Don't just, don't, 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 don't be covered. Way, way up for God to see. Let us pray. Holy Father, thank you for the blood, the precious blood of the Lamb. Thank you for the scarlet cord of hope. Thank you for making provision to save your people when disaster strikes. Thank you for making a plan to save your sons and daughters when this world is on fire. Oh, we want God's bosom to be our pillow. Oh Lord, I thank you for this church in worship today. Forgive us where we have failed you. Forgive us where we failed one another in our homes, in our families, in our marriages. I pray that you will bless these parents and bless these children. Oh God, grant that the children will be saved from the wrath of, uh, and from the severe challenges of the time that face them. No matter what, Lord, when it's all over, have gone through their troubles and trials please save our children Lord please save them those who are straying and those who are confused and don't know what to do or where to go oh Lord God please visit with every one of our young people today and save our precious flock save our flock make our parents wise in knowing how to grow the young ones for you unite our hearts together as husbands and wives Bless our parents. Bless us as a church family. Keep us united in mission. Keep us focused on mission. And save us, O oh Lord God, when you shall come. In Jesus' name, amen. standing as we sing this morning this afternoon's closing hymn 598 watch ye saints
Let us pray. O thou who hearest every heartfelt prayer with thy rich grace, Lord, all our hearts prepare. Thou art our life, thou art our love and light. O let these remaining Sabbath hours with you be bright. Amen. Are you seated as we sing our dismissal? Just a brief announcement. Everyone going on the couple's cruise, please be reminded that there is a brief meeting right after the service. Together again. Together.